Here's the other video you guys been really waiting for. What's up, Finn fans? So, if you can tell by the title, this is my, I guess you could say, five to one or one to five uh, quarterback prospects video. So, like I said to you guys, I'm going to do pretty much all the positions in this year's draft. So, if you guys have a list of top five prospects for the offensive line, defensive line, wide receiver, running backs, linebackers, cornerbacks, safeties, comment that ish below. Make, you know, and then I'll look at it and I'll pick my top five out of those and then I'll do my, my, my research on them. So today, again, we're doing quarterbacks. So my top, now in no specific order, these are the quarterbacks that I've talked about. I'm, again, there's no specific order. This isn't their ranking from one to five, but this is the quarterbacks we are going to be talking about today. You got Kyler Murray, of course, Drew Locke, Will Greer, Haskins, Daniel Jones. Those are the five quarterbacks I'm going to be talking about today. And those are the five quarterbacks I'm going to be ranking from five to one. We're going to go one that I think isn't as great as the others up to the best. Now, here's my criteria on what I did with these quarterbacks. I didn't look up their highlight videos. I don't want to see these guys, you know, do their best. Obviously, I want to see them do their best, but I don't want to see just the highlight of every great throw they did through to a 2008 college football season. I don't want to see every great move, run, like all these plays, all these like dink and dunk passes that have broken for huge. I don't want to see that. What I did was I found each of their team's games versus good or top level competition. So for each of these guys, when I tell you uh, you know, my, my, my stuff on them and my, my pros and my cons and why they're at five versus who's going to be at four, three, two, one. I'll tell you the game I watched and I'll tell you the film I watched. Now, obviously it's just one game. It could have been a bad game for them. I didn't, you know, I did my research. So you might disagree with me. If you disagree with me, please let me know below. Obviously I love when you guys comment. Uh, but if you disagree with me, that's cool. There's opinions. You might see something I didn't see. I might see something you didn't see. So be sure to comment below. But here we go. Let's jump into this ish. Top five quarterback prospects in the 2019 draft. And my number five quarterback uh, is Daniel Jones. Now, before you guys start screaming at me, the Daniel Jones fans and like, how do you have him at five versus the other four crappy ones that you're probably going to have? Why is Daniel Jones at five? Well, I watched his Clemson him, the Duke versus Clemson tape. Now, there's a lot of good with Daniel Jones. Also, I noticed that a lot of people were saying that this draft class is, isn't is great. It's kind of weak. Um, and then the more research I did, I kind of saw what they were talking about. Um, next year's draft is with Tua and with the Clemson quarterback uh, is way better. But this year's draft is kind of weak, but Daniel Jones is at five. Watch this Clemson tape. He's six foot five, 220. He's a big quarterback. Um, he's also very, very mobile. He's very quick and he's very elusive with his height. Um, he's got great size, great, you know, arm strength, great legs. Um, but the ball placement needs a little bit to be a little bit more precise. He's uncomfortable under pressure. When he starts to get that pressure in his face, you can tell that he starts to duck it down and throw the ball like back foot, throw it away or back foot, try to make passes. You could tell that he's not comfortable with pressure in his face. Type of quarterback that is a system quarterback, if that makes any sense. He, Duke had this system on offense where it would be quick passes, right? He get the ball, get it out to, you know, a quick out, you know, a wide receiver screen, a running back screen, or he would, you know, take it and try to get it and then throw it deep, you know, is quick, quick passes. So when he had to actually hike the ball, stand there, read the defense, make throws, he was, he was inaccurate and had trouble with that. And that's the reason why I had him at five. He has the intangibles of a good, great quarterback potential, but in this NFL, 
your legs are only going to get you so far. Look at what the San Diego Chargers, and again, I call them San Diego Chargers because they've been San Diego forever. I know they're the LA Chargers, but who cares? Look what they did to Lamar Jackson. They put like five or six corners on the field to stop him from running and making him have to read the defense and throw the ball. That's what they're going to do with these quarterbacks that mostly use their legs. Now, I know Daniel Jones didn't mostly use his legs. I know that Daniel Jones threw the ball, but he used his legs a lot. He, Like I said, he also threw the quick passes. He also threw the bubble. Like, it was quick passes in and out of his hands, in and out of his hands. So that's the reason why I have him at five. Um, I think that when it comes to him reading defenses, when it comes to him and his precision passes, and when it comes to him and, you know, actually staying in the pocket, it's going to take some work. Not saying he's a bad quarterback, not saying he's going to be a good quarterback, but that's why I have him at five. Number four is Will Greer. The reason I have Will Greer a little bit higher than Daniel Jones is because Will Greer has that stay in the pocket, throw it. He has a great arm and he can make those tight throws. And, you know, that's why I have him above Daniel Jones because Daniel Jones, like I said before, it's just, it's, it's, he's a system quarterback. He has that good pocket presence and he knows how to hit those back shoulder throws. The game I watched for Will Greer um, it is Syracuse. And we'll go back, watch that game. Now, the reason that Will Greer is um, number four and not higher is inconsistent with his deep pass accuracy. He's also on the shorter side. He's six foot one, 214. So he, he he's, he's, he's got that small thin body now there's another quarterback that i mentioned that has that body but i'll tell you why i ranked him where i ranked him so with will greer you know he's got the the poise of a quarterback a pocket passing quarterback and you know that can read the defense can make the tight throws and everything but the reason why i have him so low is his his physical attributes um and his you know his his inconsistency with the deep balls so that's why i got will greer at number four again if you want to see my tape that I watched, one of many, check out the Syracuse game. You know, I, I like I said, I like to watch these quarterbacks face top defenses and top ranked competition because that's what they're going to be facing in the NFL. Even with a crappy team in the NFL, it's still going to be a top ranked uh, competition versus these college teams. My number three quarterback, we're getting up there, boys. My number three quarterback, Drew Locke. So now you know who the top two are. So Drew Locke, six foot three. 225. He's got great arm strength. Uh, he's a pocket passer, so he's more accurate in the pocket. He also played in the SEC. So the game tape I watched of Drew Locke was his game tape versus Alabama. With these quarterbacks, if they played Alabama, I watched that tape because those are the games that they're going to play a really great defense that's going to try to shut them down. So I can see if they can make the passes, if they can do all that stuff. So Drew Locke, like I said, he's a really good uh pocket passer he's got a great uh, arm strength you know he's accurate in the pocket and he played sec teams now his downfall is when he should be throwing the ball away or when he should just you know be smart with the ball he tends to throw interceptions he tends to just you know chuck it you know oh crap i'm gonna take a second let me just throw this up and pray to god that someone can catch it and it tends to lead to interceptions he also um leaves the pocket when he doesn't need to so he is a pocket passer and he stays in the pocket and he's good in the pocket. But a lot of times, instead of just stepping up or doing the things he needs to do, he tends to leave the pocket. And when he leaves the pocket, he's not as good as a pocket passer, uh, not as good accurately as he is in the pocket. So, you know, th these are things that aren't uncoachable. These aren't things that you can't fix, especially with the, his type of strength which is you know reading defense great arm strength all that stuff so with his bad um, decision making when it comes to interceptions instead of throwing the ball away that's something you can you can easily train and also with his uh, pocket presence with staying in the pocket stepping up and not running out you can also train because when this dude runs out of the pocket sometimes like i said he's very inaccurate he had a hard time winning the big games so he didn't win his first ranked game in his college career till his last month as a college quarterback. And these are the reasons why I have him at three. But these are also the reasons why I have him ahead of Will Greer and Daniel Jones. So now, <clears throat> my one and my two. My one and my two were, 
very difficult for me. So it's either, you know, Kyler Murray or Dwayne Haskins. And this was very difficult for me because, you know, they both had the same um, amount of play time. You know, one is a, a mobile quarterback. The other one isn't, even though a lot of people like to say Dwayne Haskins is a mobile quarterback. He is not. He averaged 1.4 yards a carry. He's a pocket passer, extreme pocket passer. So this was difficult for me because they have two different styles of playing and one style could get you killed and the other one can't. So I, had, I, I came down to the intangible of, you know, it's gonna win that game for you, gonna, gonna put it all on the line for you. You know, who would I have ranked? And I have Dwayne Hoskins at number two. Now, again, this was very difficult for me. And again, a lot of these rankings might change once I, once I watch the combine, their pro days, all that stuff. My rankings might change and uh, some people might jump into the top five that I didn't even talk about. Some people might fall out of the top five, you know what I'm saying? So this is just my first impressions and my first rankings. But I have um, Dwayne Haskins at number two. Now with Dwayne Haskins, like I said, people like to say that he's a mobile quarterback and he's a runner. He's not. He's a pocket passer. Um, he's not mobile, not really mobile. He can if he needs to, but he's not. 1.4 yards a carry. He's six foot three, 222 pounds. Big dude. Uh, the tape I watched on him was his tape versus Penn State. That was that was a game where he he had his ups and his downs in that game, and that's the game that I watched um, really closely because he made great throws in that play, in that game, but he also made really bad throws in that play. And a lot of his touchdowns and a lot of his yards were screen plays and, and drop offs that they broke it off. Very good with the short and middle throws. So you know if you're going sideline to sideline or to the hashes, he's really good. You know getting underneath the the um, coverage in the middle of the field, he's really good at the throws. But when it comes to throwing the ball deep, he tends to get a lot of air under the ball and they tend to float on him. Also gets very flustered under pressure. So if you got a lot of pressure coming into his face, he tends to like get startled and not do too well. Also, if he's making a read and his first guy is covered and unavailable, he also tends to freeze. He tends to freeze and he tends to get like a little, a little rattled from that. But the thing that makes him number two and the thing that I like about Haskins is not only his intangibles, not only the way he plays, but he is a, not necessarily a winner, but when it comes to third and fourth downs and when it comes to the two minute drive, if you need a score or you need to convert, he's gonna get it for you. So that's why I have him ranked two. That's why I have him ranked above the other three quarterbacks I have right now is his accuracy, his arm strength and his conversion and his um, two minute drive and his ability to pull it out. Now, the number one quarterback I've ranked, obviously we already talked about it, is Kyler Murray. Now this dude is a ridiculous athlete. Now, there's a lot of times that I, they, they, a lot of people had him going 13 to Miami. A lot of people had him falling that far. But then once he uh, made his you know commitment that he's going to start training for the combine and all that stuff, seemed to be completely out of reach for the Miami Dolphins. They say he's going top five, maybe even number one to Arizona, and then Arizona will keep two, both quarterbacks or try to get rid of Josh Rosen. We don't know, but he's listed 5'10", 190. Uh, is he 5'10"? We won't know to the combine. He said he's going to the combine. He said he's going to throw. We don't know if he's going to throw. But the tape I watched of him is obviously the Alabama game, the bowl game. You can see in the first half of that game where he struggled, you know, with his passes, with with short passes, passes in general. Alabama kept him in the pocket. Um, but you can see his strengths in that game along with his weaknesses. So his strengths in that Alabama game is his speed. And when he wants to go, he's gone. And you keep doing that, you saw the Alabama team, as the game went on, start to tire and not be able to contain him. Like I said, the first half of that game, they contained um, Kyler Murray and they, they made him stay in the pocket and throw. Second half of that game, he was running all over them because they were gassed and tired from chasing this dude. Now, his height, to me, a lot of people like to say, you know, his height, how is that a problem? His, his offensive linemen are huge. He still did what he had to do. Yes, but his height and his weight and his prone to getting injured is a problem for me because he has a lot of batted balls. He also, um, like I said, 
in the NFL, like I said with Lamar Jackson, Lamar Jackson's bigger than Kyler Murray. They will, they will learn and stop you at running. They will shut you down and make you po pass from the pocket. And it, you're going to get these defensive tackles, linebackers, safeties coming at you are way, way bigger than in college. So they will kill you. So he needs to, like, he's a small dude. So you also have to realize that, like, how long can he stay healthy in the NFL? But those are his downfalls. His downfalls literally are his, his height, his weight. And that's about it because the dude has, you know, he has a great arm. Look at the touchdown pass in the Alabama game that he st stepped up and just launched it for right in the dude's hands for a touchdown. Um, you know, you got to deal with the batted balls, but he's a freak athlete and he's great. And that's the only reason why I have him at number one over Dwayne Haskins is because of his speed, his way of making the big plays, his way of winning the big games. And that intangible is the reason why I have him at number one. If not for that, I would have Dwayne Haskins at number one. If not for that, I don't think he would be in the, in the top five prospects talking if he didn't have that freak arm strength and, and throwing ability and speed. If he just had his speed, I don't even think he would be getting drafted, to be honest with you. So those are my top five prospects. Be sure to comment below. Let me know which order you have him in. Let me know if you have a quarterback in there that I didn't mention. But again, top five. I'm doing the top five. Again, this list could change. There's a lot that's going on from now to the draft. You have the combine, you have their pro days. So this list could very easily change. This is my first list, just like it was my first free agency video. This is my first list of um, these quarterbacks. Again, I took so many notes on these guys. So it's not like I just pulled this information out of my ass. So again, comment below, let me know what you guys think about the uh, list, who I have, your agreements, your disagreements. But like I usually say, guys, stay classy. Stay classy. I'm going to get to your guys' comments of the day. And this one comes from Twitter, and it comes from Chauncey Roberts. And he asks me, who do you think of the hire of Reggie McKenzie? If you don't know, Reggie McKenzie uh, was the GM for the uh, Oakland Raiders. And now he's with the Miami Dolphins in a scouting, you know, assistant to the GM type position. Now, um, what I'm hearing is he's not going to be staying in Miami. He's going to be just like giving advice and scouting, you know, he'll be in Miami, but he's not going to constantly stay and be in there. So my thoughts on Reggie McKenzie's hire is cool. He was named NFL executive of the year by the pro football writers of America in 2017. Um, he drafted, he was in the front office when the Packers drafted Aaron Rodgers. I know a lot of people are probably like, but he didn't draft him, but he still was a part of it after Cleo Mack. Um, now a lot of you guys might say, well, he's the reason Cleo Mack's gone. Is he though? <laughs> because I honestly think that had all to do with John Gruden. I don't think that had anything to do with uh, Reggie McKenzie. But again, Reggie McKenzie is not the general manager of the Miami Dolphins. He's just there as an assistant role. Really, Greer is filling the front office and the scouting department with top-ranked, highly touted scouts and GMs. Because look at the guy we got from Buffalo. Look at Reggie McKenzie. Look at all these guys we're bringing in. If you ask around the NFL, which I did it, but a lot of writers did, the Dolphins are filling their front office and their scouting department with great top-notch people. So we'll see how this free agency goes and we'll see how this draft goes and we'll see how, if everything I'm reading is correct. But thank you for the comment. That's my thought on um, Reggie McKenzie. Not a bad addition. You know, it doesn't, I'm not scared because he's not in, he's not the new GM. He's just an assistant helping role. So thank you for the comment. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. That's where I got that comment from, from Twitter. Be sure to follow me on Twitter. Um, I tweet out a ton of things, especially when it came to this list. I asked you guys, what do you guys think? Give me your guys' list. And a lot of you guys did. I even put it here on um, Faith, on YouTube, and a lot of you guys commented below. You guys also threw in a name, Ryan Finley. Now you guys threw that name into me way too late. I was already like almost done with my uh, film study, but I'm going to look into Ryan Finley because a lot of you guys threw that name at me and he might be in the next video when I do my prospects part two. But like I said, follow me on Twitter. Go check out the Bit Boys. We're killing Resident Evil. We got a ton of new games we're gonna play. Uh, if you like video games and you like that stuff, be sure to go check it out again. We're gonna start doing Twitch streams. I'm gonna start doing Twitch streams, uh, but again, 
that's down the road. For me, YouTube is number one, number one. But be sure to check out the Bit Boys. Give this video a thumbs up because you like this stuff. You like me breaking down prospects. You like me doing these types of videos. It lets you guys hitting that thumbs up lets me know, okay, they like what I'm doing. Let me keep doing it. Again, if you guys have any things, any suggestions video wise, any suggestions like, hey, should I add this into your videos? You should stop doing this. I read them. I, add, I tweet, you know, I comment back saying why. If you give me a legit reason or a reasonable reason, I put it into very good consideration. So be sure to let me know. Um, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. This is one of many videos. NFL news comes out. I'm going to give it to you guys. Dolphin news comes out. You know you're getting it from me. Free agency news, draft news, all of the news of the Dolphins. You're getting it from me. I got a ton of videos planned. I got more prospects videos planned. So be sure to comment below. Let me know. I think next, let me know what prospects you want me to do next. Offensive line, wide receivers, all that stuff. And then give me your top five to look at. Top five talent-wise, not top five you like, but top five talent-wise. But other than that, I will see you guys real soon. But like usual, stay classy in these comments. We got to stick together. We're a band of brothers. Stick, stay classy. Fins up.